Advent season, we're in the time where we're thinking about and, and talking about Christmas and talking about the purpose of Christ, the mission of Christ. And I want to read this scripture, which is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. It's from Ephesians 1. And I want you to notice how many times this passage reminds us about Jesus Christ. It says from verse 3, Ephesians 1, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Hallelujah. I don't know if you notice how, how many times this scripture keeps on reminding us in Christ, through Christ, because of Christ. And this afternoon and this morning, we want to remind ourselves that it's about Jesus. It's about, it's about, it's all about Jesus. This is what the season is for. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will remind you and I and take our focus back to him. Because it is because of him, it is for him, it is through him, it is in him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's all about him. Join us as we declare this this morning. Put your hands together for our God.
ancient groaning is a new creation coming is the glory of the Lord to me the light within our midst is a glow that we remind ourselves of You are worthy, God. We exalt you. 
church, just lift up your voice and say your word. of his great love for us you didn't want heaven without us so Jesus Just give him worship. Give him worship, Lord. We worship you, Lord. God, we acknowledge that your name is above every other name, Lord. And even in this season of Christmas, we are here to exalt only one name. We are here to exalt only one name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is worthy of all praise. The name of Jesus is worthy. It is in the name of Jesus that there is salvation for all mankind. It is in the name of Jesus that our hope lies. It is in the name of Jesus that every knee, every knee bows, every tongue confesses that he alone is worthy. Oh. Death could not hold you. The veil told before you. You silenced the bounds of sin. Praise of you. 
like us to stand for one more minute wherever is sitting if you can please stand and with all our hands lifted up and our eyes closed with all our hands lifted up and our, and our eyes closed just focus on him focus on him one that is worthy the songs we just sang focus are focusing us on him that left the heavenly pavilions and he came down just to die for you and me and today we can walk with our heads held high because of the free gift of salvation john the baptist saw him and he said behold the lamb of god that takes the sin of the world away he is worthy 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 worthy of all our praise worthy of all our honor Worthy of all our glory, worthy. He is worthy who forever be worthy. He will forever be worthy. And it doesn't matter what we go through. It doesn't matter what we've been going through. And sometimes, sometimes we feel challenged. We feel challenged when we are going through tough times. And those things can get to our head. And we forget that there is one on the throne. He's sitting on the throne. And everything that you go through, He knows. He is worthy when we are going through the rough waters. He is still worthy when we are going through fire. He is still worthy when we find ourselves on the mountaintop. He is still worthy when we go through the valleys. He is worthy and there is none beside Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am praying and hoping that every one of us that came to church this afternoon or this morning, whatever time it is, that you will find a place in your heart to ascribe all glory and honor to Him for what He's been doing in your life, for what He's about to do in our lives, and for what He's been using you for, doing things through you, touching lives, impacting people, and even you yourself being around here even as Maya was leading us, she talked about how 2020 has been a crazy year. And you know, you don't need a revelation for that. It has been crazy, but we are here and He is still worthy. He is still worthy. He is still worthy. Our Lord and Father, we are grateful. Grateful that you have given us this wonderful opportunity just to come and be part of this fellowship. Lord, what a blessing. To fellowship again. What a blessing it is to fellowship again. We want to thank you. And we are hoping and believing, Lord, that you keep, you continue to touch our hearts. So, Lord, you have taken us to a place. Lord, you have allowed us, Lord, to worship as a congregation. But even in our hearts, oh Lord, you've allowed us, Lord, to sing with songs and bring them to you, O King of Kings. Therefore, Lord, will you receive this sacrifice? And in the name of Jesus, I am praying, Lord, that, Lord, you will reach out your hand and touch someone that came feeling low, God. That you will take them, Lord, to a certain level and dimension in understanding and knowing you, oh Lord. Will you touch someone that came hurting and feeling pain in any way, in any body, in any part of their body, O oh King of Kings. That you will touch them, O oh King of Glory, and heal them. Make them whole, O oh King of Kings. I am praying, O oh King of Kings, that you will reach unto each one of us, O oh Lord, at our points of need. Lord, will you speak where we need to hear? You speak to us, O King of Glory, with that sweet, small, stirring voice, O King of Glory, 
that you will touch someone, touch us afresh, O God. Take us to new levels of understanding and knowing you and walking with you, O King of glory. Will you reveal yourself more to us, O King of kings? And Lord, we may find in our hearts daily in our walk to worship you, to live with you, to glorify you, and to honor you. In Jesus' name, and the congregation says, Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. A big thank you to the choir as they get off stage. Will you appreciate them? Maya and the rest of the team, God bless you so much. My name is Amos. I am the associate pastor here. I am delighted to host the service uh, this afternoon. I know we cannot shake hands, but you could reach out with a, a wave to that person seated next to you. Welcome them to church. It is always a pleasure seeing you come to church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I would like to see anyone visiting us for the very, very first time. If you're visiting Christian Life Assembly for the very first time, just shoot your hand up. We would like to welcome you. No visitors today. We have a visitor here. Welcome, sister. Welcome, my sisters. We have in welcome my sisters. It's only sisters, no brothers visiting today. Yes, I am seeing, I have, I have seen one brother. Very welcome. Like I said, my name is Amos, and uh, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the leadership. Thank you for choosing uh, just to come and be with us and fellowship with us. I am hoping that you have enjoyed our service, and I pray that uh, even the remaining parts of uh, the service will minister to you greatly. Uh, if, you're if you're going through Kigali and going back home, please carry our love. Uh, if you're here for a longer period of time, please make that seat yours. Uh, feel free to make that seat yours. You are welcome again. Shall we have the church news? Hello Christian of Assembly, greetings to you all. I would like to reiterate an announcement I made this last Sunday. As a church, in lieu of the annual Christmas cantata, because it won't be able to happen this year because of uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, I would like to call upon all the church members to uh, think about ways we can reach out to our city. Christmas is a time to show love, is a time to express the compassion and the mercy of Christ, is a time for us to show our gratitude to the Lord for his goodness to us. And there won't be a better way than reaching out to, to those in our midst that uh, are facing some challenges. I call upon all the cells in Christian of Assembly to please plan an outreach between now and the 24th, Christmas Eve. Reach out to those among you, CLA members that have had challenges as a result of the pandemic. Perhaps they were laid off from work or their businesses stalled as a result please reach out to them and bless them as the Lord may enable you. And also, as the Lord enables you and as he supplies, you may reach out to others in the community as well, according to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I am well aware that there are many people in the Christian Assembly that are not yet a part of the cells. We would like you to be involved as well. I would call upon you right now to consider bringing your contributions to the church. The contributions may be in the form of cash. They may be clothes. They may be uh, packages of foodstuffs. They may be essential households. They may be masks because some people even struggle to buy masks. Whatever the Lord may lay upon your heart to contribute, to meet the needs of those that are challenged during these days. Bring whatever the Lord leads you to bring during working hours. 
there will be someone here at the church to receive that. And um, we will organize how to reach out and distribute the things that people would bring to church here. Let's pray because as we pray, Lord, we, the Lord will speak to us and will show us how we can bless someone. Thank you all, and I'm looking forward to hearing great testimonies. I was so encouraged today to receive uh, some update from the Rugando cell. They've already started. They've blessed some school. They did a lot of work. And Rugando cell, we are proud of you. Thank you for being pace setters. And I'm looking forward to other cells also beginning to send their reports as God leads them to minister to various people in their community. Thank you. God bless you. To register for our services online and to save your spot, click on the link that is provided through our WhatsApp groups. The first thing you will need to do is select the service you want to attend. Once you find that there is room in that service, go ahead and select the number of attendees that you would like to register for. The next step is to read the information about the COVID-19 symptoms. Ensure that you read it carefully and once you've done so, select yes and continue. The next step will involve you putting in your unique information, your complete address, your full names, your email and your contact. Once those are filled in carefully and correctly, the next page will be submitting that information. Once you've submitted that information, it will lead you to another page where you will need to click finish for you to receive a confirmation email. You will immediately receive an email in your inbox and that email will contain a PDF document, which is your e-ticket. Make sure you download it and present it at the entrance when you come to church on Sunday. Thank you for following this process and we look forward to fellowshipping with you. God bless you. At 10 a.m., we have a service on claronda.online.church and on YouTube. At 12 p.m., we have a service for the kids on YouTube, and the link is provided through the WhatsApp groups. At 2 p.m., we have a service for the youth, and the link is also provided through WhatsApp. On Tuesdays, we have online prayer services through our online radio. You can be able to tune in by going to mixlr.com slash claronda at 6 p.m. On Wednesdays, make sure that you connect with your cell members through the various video conferencing apps. Discuss the word of God and pray for one another. On Fridays, the intercessors are able to also meet. And if you want to be part of that, Make sure that you let us know through the WhatsApp groups so that you're added to that platform. For more information, visit claronda.org. Follow us and like us on social media. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much, every team, for putting up uh, the church news. We were able to get a few things. Even as we went through the church news, one of the things I pick out is impact. And impact has to be meaningful. They're talking about uh, the project in Busanza. It is your project. It is my project. I would like to challenge someone and encourage someone. If you have not been there, it is important that you find time. Just 30 minutes. Drive there as an individual. Drive there as a cell group. Uh, some cells have been there. Maybe you'll be inspired to do something uh, in that light. The other thing is mass ministry. And I think you saw, imagine a young girl like Dorcas. She has a dream. She has a dream in her life. She would like to be a pilot. And the money you give regarding mercy ministry has been supporting her to go to school. And that is meaningful impact. Many other students, because she said she's representing a number of girls and uh, a number of those that were not able to, uh, to appear on the screen. So I would like to encourage you at the end of the service, Aline is seated at the back. Aline, would you... Put your hand up or stand up. Yes, that is Aline. She's under the Mercy Ministry banner. There are lots of things that you can know about Mercy Ministry. Mercy is mercy. The thing that we do about Mercy Ministry, the name already suggests it's mercy. So you reach out, you reach out and show your mercy through how you give, through how you can connect with the ministry. There are quite a number of things under that ministry. You can come and during the week see Aline for a few more details. But there are also lists attached on the notes board.
for some of those students that uh, need sponsors, if you'd like to pick a child, it may be as a cell, it may be as a family or as a couple, it may be as an individual, you go and talk to Aline. They have a table laid at the back just by the fountain. As you came in, I think you must have seen that. The ladies in their support group have been able to do a few of those things. Those ladies meet here uh, occasionally, and they have been taught a skill to be able to do something in their lives by themselves. And there are things they have been able to do. You see them at the table. If you, if you could like to pick one or two things and support mass ministry in that light. In that light, we also want to thank you so much. Uh, during COVID, that time when we were in the lockdown, uh, you really supported mass ministry. So the leadership says thank you so much. They still need your support, however. It is not done. They still need your support. Those details and how you can give and how you can support and how you can partner with mass ministry, Aline still has those details. You can see her at the end of the service or during the week. Praise the Lord. Pastor Andrew also talked about the outreach. How I pray that uh, we are known as a church that really reaches out. That it should not be like once in a while, but every now and again. As cells, just find a way of reaching out and touching lives. But specifically during this season, every cell is expected to come up with an outreach project. And uh, I don't want to overemphasize what Pastor Andrew said. If you do not belong to a cell, whatever you bring to church will be received uh, during those working hours in the week. So it's time now to give um, our tithes and offerings. We have baskets here in front. One is there, one is here, another one is right there. Uh, and uh, the Momo code is also projected, just in case you'd like to give uh, using uh, your gadgets. So all our gadgets out. The ushers are not bringing their bags. So, and for some of you who would like to give uh, right here at the front, the baskets are here. Shall we pray? And after the, the giving, Dr. Ben will be delivering the word. Father, we are grateful that you have given us this opportunity just to be in your presence, O oh Lord. Lord, you have told us in your word never to come empty-handed. We are praying, King of glory, that as we give back, week that we've given us, O oh King of kings, we are praying that, Lord, you will... Uh, uh, bless us, you multiply it, O King of Kings. Lord, someone that came in need of a breakthrough, will you reach out to them, O King of Kings? To the glory of your name, in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. It looks like love is in the air. Come on now. Love is in the air. <laughs> to the intending couples, congratulations. Cannot wait to see how God moves in and among your marriages. What a joy and an honor to be entrusted with a spouse and to trust that spouse with God. So, Blessings to each of you as you embark on this incredible journey. And here's the good news. 
The good news for every person who follows Jesus Christ is it's always love season. Love season never goes away because we are constantly loved by the outstretched arms of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so today we're gonna, we are going to look at love's life, the everlasting, the eternal, the ever-giving gift that Jesus has given to us through the gift of his death. And as we prepare for Christmas, as we enter this Advent season, as we're in the middle of this Advent season, we have an opportunity to sit and to reflect and to wait upon this promised king. Now, let me tell you about a really, really good love story. Now, this story comes to us uh, from India, where my family is from. Now, there was an emperor, Shah Jahan, back in the 1600s. He ruled, and he wanted to immortalize his wife, Mumtaz Mohal. That name means the chosen one of the palace. They were inseparable from the time they were married in 1612. And yet, she passed away. And when, he, when she passed away, he didn't know what to do with himself. He had lost the love of his life. He could have had plenty of others, but the chosen one of the palace was no longer there. And so in his mourning, he decided to immortalize her, for her to live forever, to have a resting place forever. And so he called upon 20,000 workers from India, from Persia, from the Ottoman Empire, all the way to Europe to come and work on a mausoleum that he would have for her. And ladies and gentlemen, that mausoleum is what we know of today as the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal was, is a World Heritage Site as of 1983. I would imagine that many of you have not been able to travel to India, although you are all welcome there. There are flights, I think, three times a week, pre-COVID, um, direct there. And you, I'm, sh I'm sure you would be welcomed with open arms. You arrive, you land in uh, the capital city of Delhi, and then you travel by bus to Agra. And you're, in your mind, you're thinking this huge palace, which is what it is, but you can't see it. You think, oh, maybe I'm in the wrong place. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. And then you get through the first gate, and then the second gate, and then the gate opens, and you're like, wow, this is unbelievable. 20, 17 hectares of property, all for the love of his life to be buried. After the work was done, legend has it that he made everybody cut their right thumbs off so they can never replicate this work ever again. He didn't want anybody else to replicate that work. And he also had planned across the river behind the mausoleums of river, he had planned to have another mausoleum built where he could be immortalized. But this one, instead of being white marble, which is what the Taj Mahal would be, would be done in black marble. Well, before too long, his son decided he was spending too much money immortalizing dead people. And so he arrested him and had him put in prison for the rest of his life. And yet, as good as that love story is, that love story is not complete. That love story is not complete. He had to look out onto the Taj Mahal from the prison at Fort Agra. Now, that's a really good love story. You and I are living in a great love story. You and I are living in a story that is complete. You and I are living in a story where that has started from the beginning of time, from the time God decided, let us make heaven and earth, 
Let us make man and woman. From that moment, we've been engrossed in a love story. And it's a story that stretches through all of time. It reaches every country. It leaves no person behind because it's love's life. It's the everlasting, eternal, ever-giving gift of our God and our King. Now, brothers and sisters, we are coming towards the end of 2020. Now, some of you have walked into this church barely holding on because 2020, you have experienced pain like no other year. Some of you have lost loved ones this year. Some of you have lost jobs. Some of you had grand plans and dreams at this time last year. And yet, some of you are also walking in having experienced God through the highs and through the lows. Some of you have experienced high levels of anxiety and pain. I see many kids here today, and I'm so thankful. We're so thankful to have kids back at church. So kids, yes, you are welcome. <laughs> kids, some of you have had to endure mom and dad as your teacher. And God bless you, children, because I'm sure that, that you are very happy to see your teachers yet again. Moms and dads, some of you have had to endure your children as your students. And remember when you always thought it was the teacher's fault? Yeah, after about two days in March, you realized, no, it wasn't the teacher. It wasn't the teacher indeed. We've experienced a year unlike any other, right? And as Fabrice uh, pointed out, Pastor Andrew warned us, new season, new frontiers. And it certainly has been that. And I pray as we look back through the highs, through the lows, through the Twitter uh, handles that have told us what tomorrow will bring, I pray that you are able to look back and reflect and see God's love for you in the midst of that. Here's what G.K. Chesterton, Chesterton wrote. Love means loving the unlovable or it is no virtue at all. Love means loving the unlovable, or it is no virtue at all. So today, regardless of how you came in, I pray that you see love's light, that God loves you, love's length, that Jesus died for you, and love's lead, that Christians should love you. Romans 8, 35 to 39 reminds us there is nothing Nothing at all that could separate us from God's love. And I don't know how you came in today, but I pray as you go out, you would be reminded of God's never-ending, always present, always full love for you. So with that, would you open your Bibles with me to 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. And as you open your Bibles there, let me just give you a little bit of a context. John, that's writing this letter, is the same one that wrote the Gospel of John. He was one of Jesus' disciples, the beloved one. And many churches, many, many believers throughout Asia Minor came to faith in Christ through John's teaching. And those churches had been growing. And they'd been meeting as house churches, some for more than decades. And yet, some false teachers began to come on the scene. And these false teachers began to say, there's a special revelation. In order to be loved by God, you need to do X plus Y plus Z. And so John was writing this letter to remind the believers of the simple truths of God's love. So this message is written to a church, to churches that have been in hard times, 
trying times, times where they've been unsure and their faith has been rattled. And this passage in particular summarizes the entire letter. So with that, starting in verse 7 of chapter 4. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Jesus, we thank you for your love. Father, we thank you that you sent your one and only son to die on the cross for our sins. And after he rose from the dead, you sent your spirit to live among us. God, I pray that you would encourage each one that's here, those that are doubting, those that know you, those that are walking vibrantly with you, those that are against you. Lord, I pray that you would soften their hearts to receive your love today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So as we look at this passage, there's three points I'd like to make. Love's light, which is God's love for us. In verses 8, 9, and 10, the Apostle John clearly states a few things. First, he says in verse 8, God is love. So love wasn't created on February 14th. Love wasn't created when I met my spouse. Love wasn't created when I saw my child for the first time. Love was before the beginning of time because love is God and God is love. So as believers, as those who follow Jesus Christ, let us reclaim the idea of love. Never again should we say, I just don't feel like I love him. I just don't feel like I love her. I sure would witness to that person, but I just don't love him. I would be nice to that person, but I don't love her. Friends, God is love. Love is God. And not only that, but he chose to demonstrate his love for us through the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. He didn't keep that gift all to himself. Instead, he sent his son as a tangible demonstration for you and for me, for believers 2,000 years ago and for believers for all time, that he loves us. 
He demonstrated his love for us through Jesus Christ. And this in verse 10, not because we loved God, but because he loved us. He loved us. He sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. I don't know if you had this experience, and I'm not going to put the intending couples on the spot. Within two months of meeting my then-to-be wife, I, I did things a little differently. In our culture, we can get marriages arranged, and I would have happily had an arranged marriage after about 30. But at this time, I was 21, and I met this young lady, and within two months, I knew she was the one that I would marry. And so I drove 12 hours across the U.S. to meet her. And I told her, Susie, I love you. And she said, thanks, do you want to get something to eat? <laughs> and I took it in stride. I said, yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I do. And I kept holding on that at some point she would also say, I love you too. And a few months later, on Easter morning, she did. But what a risk that felt like for me to say it knowing I didn't know if she would say it back. Now imagine the heart of our Father creating a world where he knows his beloved children are going to mess up. Where he knows that they are going to be overcome by sin. Where he knows that they will ultimately reject him. Not because we loved him, but because he loved us. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And that foundational love can get you through the highest of times and can get you through the lowest of times. As we reflect on 2020, and I encourage everyone to take some time these coming weeks to reflect, to look back and trace the threads of God's love in your life. In the valley, he was there. On the mountaintop, he was there. And he's there everywhere in between. Everywhere in between. God's love is there. Secondly, love's length. Christ's love for us. Love's length knows no bounds. It's stretched from Jesus' right hand all the way across to his left hand. And between both of those, your sins and my sins, the sins of the entire world were atoned for. Every lash, every beating, every bruise was paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. There is no sin that you or I carry. There is no sin that you or I have committed, will commit, or are committing now that Jesus' outstretched arms in love do not pay for. We are a forgiven people. We are a loved people. We are ones who God looks down and says, that's my son, that's my daughter. And his love is bigger than all of our mess-ups. And what does he ask us to do? He asks us to accept the free gift of his love. He doesn't ask us to pay for it. The price has already been paid. He doesn't ask us to come with our sacrifice. The sacrifice has already been put on the cross. 
He says, I love you. Accept this, my gift of salvation for you. Acknowledge me as Savior and Lord. And in verse 13, he says, those that say they love him. He not only gave us his son, but he put his spirit inside of us. The comforter, the counselor, the convictor. He had promised his disciples he wouldn't leave them as orphans. And he certainly did not. And he says, if you claim to be a follower of me, then the Spirit should be inside of you. And what does that Spirit produce? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so love's length stretches as far as Jesus' arms. And you and I are welcomed into love's length. So, now, what do we do with that? Jesus died on the cross for my sins and your sins. We come to this church, many of us, in a relationship with God. Some of us come not knowing yet Christ is our Savior. And the good news is, there is no price for admission. You can know him today, right now in your heart, just by saying, Jesus, I accept you. I acknowledge you as my Savior and Lord. And for those of us that walk with Jesus, we have the final point, love's lead. This is our love for one another. Jesus didn't pray in John 17 that his believers would be rich, that his believers would be powerful, that his believers would conquer the world. What did he pray? He prayed that they would love one another. He prayed that by his love, by our love, the world would know about him. Let's love one another in verse 7 because love comes from God. Since God loved us, we ought to love one another. If you love one another, in verse 12, God lives in us and his love is made complete. Verse 17, love is made complete when we live in love and live on God. This shows the world that we are like him. This shows the world his love. Brothers and sisters, we are the representation of God to this earth. You are the esteemed ambassador of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how pretty or ugly you are, doesn't matter how short or how tall you are, by the way, yesterday was a big day in our household. After 28 years, I am no longer the tallest member of Team Thomas Worldwide. I gladly cede that throne to my eldest son, Simon, to now be the, el the tallest worldwide of the Thomas family. It doesn't matter your qualifications. What matters is, do you have Jesus? in your heart? Have you said yes? And if you've said yes, brothers and sisters, let's love one another. So what do we do with this? First, right now, I just want to give everyone a moment. If you have not received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I'm just going to take 10 seconds just to quiet our hearts. If you've never received him as your Savior and Lord, would you consider that, making that commitment right now? And all that is, is saying, Jesus, I accept you. You are the Son of God. You've paid for my sins. So let's, all eyes closed, let's take just 10 seconds, and anyone that hasn't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, 
Would you welcome him into your heart right now and invite him in? Say, Jesus, I acknowledge you as my Savior and Lord. I acknowledge you as the sacrifice that was made for my sins. I surrender my will to yours in Jesus' name. Amen. If you made that prayer, would you come and see one of the pastors at the end of this service? Would you tell someone that maybe came with you to church today as well? Would love to pray for you and encourage you in the faith. Second, for those of us that walked into this place saying we're brothers and sisters, that saying that we are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, let us go out into the world and show the world his great love for us. Let's show mercy to those who need mercy. What a beautiful Sunday highlighting mercy ministry. And Auntie Joy and the mercy ministry team, thank you for the work that you do. But showing mercy is not just their job. It's all of our jobs. It's not confined just to this building. It's when you see a kid on the street without food. How do you extend mercy to them? When you see someone who's suffering, how do you extend mercy to them? What's one thing you can do today to show God's love to the world? What's one thing you can do tomorrow to show God's love to the world? What's one thing you can do the next day to show God's love to the world? Let's develop the habit of living as sons and daughters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let me close with this quote by G.K. Chesterton. According to most philosophers, God in making the world enslaved it. According to Christianity, however, in making it, he set the world free. God had written not so much a poem, but rather a play. A play he had planned as perfect, but which had necessarily been left to human actors and stage managers who had since made a great mess of it. Brothers and sisters, I join you in that mess. I am one among you, making God's perfect masterpiece a mess. And yet I walk in his grace, knowing that his love is bigger than all of my mess-ups and bigger than all of your mess-ups. And so let me invite you to step into this play that God has created and he's directing. Let's accept his love and let's show the world that he is love and his love reaches out to every person on this planet. May we live our lives in such a way that our life is a masterpiece of God's love for us. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Dr. Ben, for that wonderful delivery. May God help us that we will be vessels in his hand just to demonstrate his love. So as we come to the end of our service, I would like to uh, just emphasize a few things as you head out. Please pick one of those items and support Mercy Ministry. Also, see Aline in case you would like to sponsor a child or uh, you would like to be part of... Uh, uh, partner with them in any way possible. May God bless you and uh, may I ask you to rise to your feet and share the words of uh, grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. May God bless you. Have a great week. May you see God's faithfulness and goodness will catch you soon. <laughs>